Hello everyone and welcome back to Data Cloud Now's live coverage of Snowflake Summit in Las Vegas, the world's largest data and AI conference. I'm now joined by Naveen Sharma, VP Global Practice Head of AI and Analytics at Cognizant. Naveen, such a pleasure to have you on the program it is today. Fantastic to be here. We love the energy in the show, love the fact that this is, to your point, becoming the largest data and analytics go-to place for everyone. So Great to be here. You know, the buzz is all around us, but I want to dive into Cognizant. You are engineering modern business to improve everyday lives. What trends are you noticing and what's top of mind for your customers, Naveen? Yeah, so, so we work with the Global 2000 and you know, there's an interesting, uh, there's an interesting opportunity that the current uh, market forces present. You know, you see the overall macroeconomic slowdown, right. but then there's also the excitement and the energy that Gen AI, Chat GPT, all of these things have leased into the marketplace. So on one hand, we've got customers that are saying, you know, how do I do more with less? But then there's also a big push towards experimenting more and trying to do things that have never been done before. And to make it even more fun, there's also a little bit of uncertainty, right? So playing with Gen AI, large language models, it's almost like playing with this new toy that no one <laughs> ever had. And I'm like, well, this is fun, but am I going to hurt myself with this? So all of those things are going on. I think that's fascinating what's happening with the market. But bigger picture, I think our clients are realizing um, there is a, a certain imperative of getting data right. right. And if you don't get the data foundation and the data that you have within your enterprise right, the experiences you provide to your clients, your employees, your other stakeholders, the speed with which you can act, none of those are going to give you a competitive edge. So I think clients are finally buying into the data imperative. That's a big thing. I spoke about Gen AI and how everyone wants to experiment with it the business is further ahead than IT is on this one. Businesses, business stakeholders are coming to us and saying, how can I get this in my environment? So that's fascinating. A little bit longer term, I also do think, you know, I might be one of the last people that are still talking about the metaverse, and I'll tell you why I do that. Apple with their VR headset, I think might be able to breathe some life into that. So I know everyone wrote off the metaverse. Um, I can understand why but I think with the Apple VR headset coming out, we're going to see some very niche use cases come out of the industry. So those are all things that our clients are interested in, they're all talking about it, and we're just excited. Couldn't, couldn't be a better time or a place to work in the business. You know, to, to your point, an exciting time, and almost a proving ground, yep. if you will, right now. You know, I'm so glad you mentioned Gen AI and LLMs, clearly the hot topic here at, at Snowflake Summit. For the audience watching, what advice would you give them in reference to this technology, and what can they be doing now to be successful over the next coming years? Yeah, there's so much to unpack in that question, but the first thing I would, the first thing I would ask anyone to do is play with it, experiment yeah. with it, you know, and not just go to ChatGPT and type a question and be out with the answer, but find a use case in your industry environment. It doesn't have to be a use case that you know, solves every problem under the sun. Pick a low risk, high value scenario and build something out. And just that exercise, going through that motion of building something out, will get you so much more comfortable, will get you such a better sense of how to deploy Gen AI with meaning in your enterprise. The other thing that you have to think about is there is going to be a looming talent shortage. You know, once this thing, once, once this takes off. And it's going to happen quickly, I think. It's going to happen really fast, right? So, so start thinking about how do you upskill your workforce? How do you build that new operating model for the technology enterprise? where you're training people not only to use Gen AI, but also new roles like prompt engineers. How do you get people to build careers in that space? The last thing I would say is, you know, this is tomorrow's technology. Right. You can't necessarily look for use cases in today's business with tomorrow's technology. So you are going to have to think creative. Think a little bit about what this can do for problems that we may not have traditionally focused on. So a little bit of a keep the faith and just lean in heavy on this. This is going to be here for a while. It's going to be meaningful and it's going to be exciting. You know, exciting indeed. Great to have your perspective on Gen AI and LLMs because it's clearly the hot topic yep. for, for everyone across the board. Another area that has been a major priority over the last couple of years is ESG. Yep. And specifically the role data has in ESG. I want to explore a little bit you know, Cognizant recently launched their sustainability report. Would love to hear the key takeaways and will this initiative remain pivotal for Cognizant over the coming years? It's something that we firmly believe in. It is one of our core values. 
We believe that it's something that we owe the environment, we owe it to all of our, um, and it's also something that our workforce expects from us. So it's very much core to how we operate as a business. Now, the ESG report is available on our website, I'm not going to go drain the content out there, but it's something where we've made very specific commitments to reducing our emissions, to getting to net zero, all of those are things that are detailed out of the report. We're also trying to drink our own champagne. So things that we've learned through the journey, we've actually built up a sustainability practice that we go to market with. So we're trying to say, you know, look, here's the things that we learned. And we didn't always know the right path to take, but over the last few years, here's lessons learned. We want to take it to our clients. We want to make sure we continue to learn from all of these things. So, so that's from a business perspective. There's another element to this from a day-to-day -day perspective. Right. The traditional business model for firms such as us has been build out large campuses, get people to travel to those campuses. You know, it's not unusual to see a large cognizant campus with 10,000 people in it. You start to think about that, you know, maybe there was a time and place when that made sense, but does it really make sense to get 10,000 people to relocate from wherever they used to live, have them move to a large town, large city, put them on a bus in the morning and in the afternoon to bring them into the office? We think there was a time and place for that model. We think that's going to change. So one of the things we're doing with our, our own real estate footprint is we're saying we're going to expand into tier two and tier three cities. So give people more choices in terms of where they live, where they go to work, bring the office closer to them as opposed to forcing them to relocate 100 miles, 200, 500 miles away. So we think those are all things that we can do as responsible citizens, corporate citizens, drive the cognizant agenda forward, be good to the environment, be good to the planet, and then also make a meaningful business out of it. You know, it's great to hear how you're adapting everything you do, not only for your customers, but also your employees as yep. well. Because to your point, I think when you do both, the dividends for, for long-term you know, payout, from your standpoint, how can the audience learn more about everything Cognizant's going through? It's an exciting next chapter right now, Naveen. It is, it is. We're writing the next chapter as you speak, right? So, so I was sharing this with you before the interview. Just yesterday we celebrated our 25th anniversary of being public. You Massive know? congratulations, by Thank the way. You. And that's, that's, that's a wonderful accomplishment, but I can tell you, I've been at Cognizant 15 years. I am more bullish about our next 25 years. The things that we have done in the last 25, they're fantastic, they're phenomenal. But where we're positioned right now, where the world is headed. If every firm, is, every, every company is going to be a technology company that's going to differentiate itself on data and experience and the speed at which they respond to market forces and challenges, I can't think of a better place to be at than Cognizant. I think we can help our clients. There's always something new that we're doing. There's always the willingness to learn. There's the acknowledgement that we will never know all the answers, but then there's also the appreciation that if I don't know the answer, I will go find the answer. So all of those things together, I think make it a fantastic place to be and uh, very excited about the future. Well, congratulations on the anniversary. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on Data Cloud Now. Thank you. And for the audience watching, I'm Ryan Green. We'll see you soon.